All right, so Fired Up Fridays is now Fired Up Freedom. I just want to do a little bit of a recap of season one. It was amazing. I had so much fun, a lot of amazing guests, a lot of great conversation. It was really, really awesome. If you're someone who wants to have a growth mindset, if you're someone who wants to take action and go towards your goals, then Fired Up Freedom is great for you. It doesn't matter if your goal is financial or personal. And now that we're moving into season two, we're gonna be talking a lot of different things surrounding freedom. We said, if you take zinc, if you take vitamin C, if you take certain mushrooms, not the kind of psychedelic mushrooms, okay, <laughs> uh, right. that that actually can help build up your immune system. So you don't know what's going to happen. I was homeless. Now I'm a multimillionaire. I mean, life is like you never know. They they research you inside and out. So she found out what I was doing with my karate, helping a lot of kids, even though I was using drugs. Mm -hmm. I was helping kids to get off the street and, and you know, get into karate and, you know, focus their lives and things like that. I well, hello there, family. You're listening to Fired Up Freedom with Steve Ryan. Fired Up Freedom. All right. Free Do you ever look for certain services or products and it's just hard to find and you want to know if someone else has used that before? Well, visit my resources page, steveryan.com slash resources, steveryan.com slash resources. Fired Up Friday is now Fired Up Freedom. All right, all right. Welcome to Fired Up Friday. Uh, we have Dr. John Giordano in the house. Uh, I apologize if I say your last name wrong there. <laughs> and it's all right. I have a hard time saying it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, happy day to you. Um, I'm so glad that you're here on the show, and um, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of exciting things to cover. And so, um, I know one of the biggest things that uh, you know for you was the uh, the you're a certified addiction professional, uh, and I know you had some words about that. So, what's your what's your take on on addiction, and you know how do you view that? Well, you know, addiction is uh, going through the roof right now. The 221, 2021, got 100,000 deaths, uh, people dying from uh, overdoses. Right. Um, you know, the problem is, is when the treatment is like 70 years behind the times. And what I mean by that is the treatment model that treatment centers follow is was based on a model from 1950. And it was wow. an alcoholic model. And as we know, drugs are much more powerful than alcoholic alcohol, and it definitely damages the brain. Right. So does alcohol, but drugs damage it real quick. And um, so what we're doing is we're not, we're looking at a 28 day model. And if you really look at 28 days, a guy's using drugs for 20 years, and now you're telling him, okay, hey, 28 days, you're going to be fine. Oh, no, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Right. Uh, what happens is people go to detox. Well, they call it detox. It's really stabilization units because to detoxify someone doesn't mean you put other toxins in. So they get detoxed, okay, or stable, stabilized, and then they go to treatment. Now, they, they still, their brain is still not working right. So they're in treatment now, let's say, if they make it to treatment, because a lot of people don't because they don't have you know, enough money or they, have, uh, they don't want to go or whatever the reason. So let's say the ones that go to treatment, um, their brain is still not functioning, right? So in about two weeks, they start to clear up a little bit, maybe, okay? And then they might bond with a therapist, okay? And then they have to leave the next week. Well... I don't think that works out too well. Most right. of the 
they go back to uh, uh, the same environment they came out of. Uh, and uh, it's horrific is what's going yeah. on because the insurance companies are running the treatment centers, not the treatment centers are running the treatment centers. And treatment centers are doing the best they can under the circumstances, right? But it's only a five to eight percent recovery rate. Wow! So the reason I lecture all over the world about this, and it's amazing when I, I, I lectured in uh, Taiwan, I lectured in uh, in a neuroscience conference in in Budapest and uh, Baltimore and San Diego, San Francisco, all the different neuroscience conferences where psychiatrists and clinicians and researchers go. And when I talk to them about addiction and I tell them about some of the things that we're not doing, they go, wow, I never thought of this. And I'll get into it right now. When a person comes in and let's say, even from, you know, I'm talking about also depression and anxiety. All right, we throw pills at them. All right, oh, you got this? All right, give them this pill, all right? First of all, we're not looking at them comprehensively. We're looking at them psychologically. Right. Now, I'm not saying that's not a piece of the puzzle, but it's not the only piece. There's such a thing as your microbiome or microbiota, which is your gut. And if people, and oh, oh, by the way, don't believe a word I tell you. You go look it up for yourself. Because addicts don't believe you anyway. So you know, <laughs> neither do most people. All right. So go right. look this stuff up, guys. Um, yeah. The microbiome is considered to be the second brain. Most people don't realize dopamine and serotonin, those are the natural chemicals that we make ourselves. Those are the things that addicts chase. Those are the feel good drugs, are manufactured 90% in the gut. People don't realize that. And then it goes up the vagus nerve and it deposits it, the dopamine serotonin in the brain. Wow. So if, number one, if you're genetically predisposed, now there is an addiction gene, look it up, Dr. Kenneth Blum, and that's who I work with. I'm on their science team, by the way. Right, uh, right now, currently, I'm working with the scientists and researchers from 25 universities. I'm in 77 medical and scientific peer-reviewed journals. Uh, people don't believe what you say unless you have evidence. Right. And even then they don't believe you. <laughs> so you know, right. it's, just, you know, it's just people's belief systems. Right. So uh, he discovered the, the gene for addiction. Now that's the main gene. There are other genes that are related to it. And right. it's called the DRD2 ALE1 variant gene. Right. Okay. And what that all means is that you don't have enough receptor sites to accept dopamine and you can and you're looking for more okay of those chemicals in drugs and alcohol and things of that nature in uh, different behaviors sex addiction alcohol addiction gambling addiction uh there's many addictions and we don't separate them dr Bob came up with a term called rds reward deficiency syndrome you don't get enough dopamine and serotonin so you're right. always searching for it. Now, looking at that part, just because you're genetically predisposed, as a matter of fact, he has a, a test that they give. It's called the GARS test, Genetic mm -hmm. Addiction Risk Score. And it tells right. you if you have a mild, moderate, or severe propensity for addiction. Now, just because you have that gene doesn't mean you're going to become an addict. Because right. there's such a thing as they call epigenetics. Now, epigenetics means the social environment can change what is called the gene expression. Okay. So now that we got through all that scientific stuff, now, <laughs> we, go into, now, now we can go into the gut, okay? Mm -hmm. The microbiome or the flora in the gut, all right, the bacteria, the good bacteria in the gut, all right, if when that gets out of balance, you get autoimmune diseases, mm. you can get depression and get anxiety, now, how do you get depression and anxiety out of that? Well, if you have what is called, and look it up, guys, leaky gut syndrome, H. pylori infection. You can have hypoglycemia, okay? You can have a low thyroid. All of these things cause depression and anxiety, by the way. Right. Um, you can have low testosterone, okay, causes depression and anxiety, or even very high testosterone could do the same. You right. can have closed head injuries, 
that causes behavioral problems and depression and anxiety and suicidal ideation. So look at all the things that we're talking about that can cause depression and anxiety that we're not looking at. Prozac is not going to help your thyroid. Right. Okay. So what we need to do is we not, we need to start looking at people comprehensively. We're not doing that. You know, and that's the sad part. Now, yeah. therapy is very important. Going to support systems are very important. A lot of people say, well, uh, these self-help groups don't work. No. Every, anything works that's trying to help you, but you have to work. It's right. not that you walk in and you get it through osmosis and all of a sudden, oh, I'm cured. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be fixed. No, right. it doesn't work that way, guys. You know, and, right. and um, I'm a recovering addict also. So I have 37 years in recovery, continuous recovery. And um, I'm a kid from the South Bronx. I'm an inner city kid. I started, I, I quit school. I only went to the ninth grade. And uh, my father was a heroin dealer. My, fa- my my uncle was a hitman. As a matter of fact, I, I, you know, my, I have my, my book out, The Kid from the South Bronx Who Never Gave Up. If people, mm-hmm. you guys might want to read it. It's uh, showing you that no matter what kind of family you had, no matter what education you have, no matter what you've been through in life, you can still be successful. Right. So my, what happened was I had a, my wedding at 20 years old and my uncle, okay, my family member, got insulted by the caterer. So the next morning he killed him. Wow. So then we had to run to the airport because they were coming to my grandmother's house, the detectives looking for him and my new bride and my new family. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, that was a little crazy. And uh, what happened is, is I'm also a grandmaster in the martial arts, Black Belt Hall of Fame, National Karate Champion, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't pay attention to what I learned. And I got caught up in drugs and I'm about 20 years old. And I'm not going to go through the whole story and make it real simple. But I went through all the drugs. And um, I winded up cocaine was the, the drug that took me down. I went to treatment. Um uh, my family did an intervention on me when I just told you who my family was, so it's kind of funny. They're doing an intervention on me. I'm wondering who's doing an intervention on them. Uh, Excuse me. So I went to treatment, had a spiritual awakening, uh, read the book that explains all the stuff that happened. I used to do collection work for the smugglers. Uh, I used to sell drugs. I used to do a lot of different things. And, um, you know, from being a street kid, you know, I, I used to teach karate in Liberty City and Overtown. It's the black community. But most of my black belts are, are African-American. Uh, matter of fact, I did a concert. Uh, and this is what I was using, by the way. Uh, I did a concert in uh, in Liberty City and Overtown with James Brown. And um, what, I, what, I, what I put together was that no, that was right after the riots in 1981, 1980. And a lot of people didn't want to come into the community to shop because they were afraid. So what I did was I was working for a flea market at the time. I was their marketing director. And what I wind up doing was I said, look, we need a theme. So what I did was I got the SBA people, Small Business Association, to teach mm-hmm. people how to run a business in the community, how to buy products wholesale and things of that nature. Then I went around to all of the, the churches with all the deacons and all the ministers and, the, and all, all of that. And, uh, you know, talking about how we're going to fix the community, because I've been in that community for many, many years, since 1965, actually. Wow. And um, they all went along with it. And everybody laughed at me because I said, you know, I'm going to invite President Reagan to come to the flea market for our grand opening with James Brown. So everybody says, John. He's not coming to this community. I says, well, you never know. And uh, so what I did was I sent a letter to the White House. I have a, I got a letter back. It's in my office. And the president said, the secretary of the president said, he's sorry he couldn't come due to scheduling, but he's sending a representative and he sent uh, Carrie Meeks. Wow. Now, I mean, I have to tell you, uh, Carrie Meeks at the time was a state representative. She's not Senator Meeks. Um, they they research you inside and out. 
So she found out what I was doing with my karate, helping a lot of kids, even though I was using drugs. Mm-hmm. I was helping kids to get off the street and, and you know, get into karate and, you know, focus their lives and things like that. I led a double life. So she went to the Martin Luther King Foundation and they gave me the Martin Luther King Award on stage in front of, we had 60,000 people show up. Wow. Congratulations. As far as <laughs> your eyes could see, and every direction, there were people. And wow. I had the videos to show it. <clears throat> and only about a handful of people that seen James Brown video in the flea market, by the way. Wow. So these are some of the things I did, you know, uh, even while I was using. Now, when I got clean and I stopped using, I went back to school. I got my GED. Uh, I went to... Uh, college and I got my, my certifications and all the things that I do. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I started this uh, company with $300. That wasn't the first company. You have to read the book to find out the other companies that I actually got cheated out of because wow. I was a street kid. Okay. If you mess with me, I punch you in the face. Okay. But now I'm in recovery. I can't punch you in the face anymore. I got to take other routes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know if they work as well, but, you know, that's what it is. So I started this company with $300. And we had, you know, I had my, my friend who I worked in uh, with another treatment center. I made him my partner. And he says, John, where's the books? I said, I don't have any books. I said, the guy's paying me. I put it in my pocket. You know, he said, well, how do you know they're going to pay? Oh, they'll pay. So he laughed. He took over the business part. Uh, his son took over the internet part. Uh, and we were going along for a few years and broke as a joke. You know, we had uh, <clears throat> we had no money. You know, I had uh, my friend owned this little building that was 750 square feet. Uh, I asked him how much he wanted for it. He said, how much you got? I said, look, I only have $300 in the bank because I had a spending addiction also, let's say arrested. Uh, and I says, well, he says, look, I tell you what, start the company for three months, get it going, and then pay me 300 a month. I said, oh, I could do that. you know. So we did that for a couple of years, and we had people chasing us for money and then and we still gave people treatment, whether they had money or not, if they really was motivated. Fired Up Freedom will be right back after these messages. Do you ever look for certain services or products and it's just hard to find and you want to know if someone else has used that before? Well, visit my resources page, steveryan.com slash resources, steveryan.com slash resources. Right. So over time... Okay, things changed. And fast forward, we winded up. And that was about, let me see, we sold in 2012. Now, remember, we only had a 750 square foot building. We winded up having seven buildings, 147 employees, and we sold it in 2012 for $45 million. Now, if you were to tell me that in the beginning, I probably would have not only punched you in the mouth, I start choking you. <laughs> 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 wow it took so, a lot of hard work so well let me tell you something we're doing god's work and that's how i look at it you know these are people's children uh yeah. my son almost died from this and that was one of my motivation i watched them lay in a bed as they were putting uh medicine down his throat to absorb the the drugs that he took so he almost died wow and that was one of the most horrible experiences i ever had in my entire life So if you have children and you're watching them die, you know what that means. Especially if you had them die. Oh, my God. I couldn't couldn't even, excuse me, let me get a little water here. I couldn't even imagine that happening. So here I am, and this is what I do. I write books. I lecture all over the world. Uh, I do podcasts. I want to get the message out. It's yeah. desperately needed to get it out. Fired Up Freedom will be right back after these messages. Do you ever look for certain services or products and it's just hard to find and you want to know if someone else has used that before? Well, visit my resources page, steveryan.com slash resources, 
steveryan.com slash resources. Nobody's pushing building up the immune system. Right. And which is really sad. If you take zinc, if you take vitamin C, if you take certain mushrooms, not the kind of psychedelic mushrooms, okay, <laughs> uh, right. that, that actually can help build up your immune system, D3, okay, these things you need to do, you need to you know, cut back on the sugars and the processed food or cut them out, exercise. Now, when you're exercising, okay, remember, exercise depletes stress. Stress depletes dopamine. Exercise also raises dopamine. So it's very important. Now, I'm 75. I just competed uh, three years ago uh, fighting. Wow. I was thinking about doing it again. So I train. Everything I tell people to do, I do. You know, right. do as I say, not as I do. I That doesn't work for anybody, including me. So I'm on this journey doing my best to help people. You know, and if you go to my website, John, it's on the on the screen at jjordano.com, mm -hmm. uh, you can learn some things. Yeah. And these are all the things I do. So, you know, we need to help each other. You know, with all the division and the uh and you know, the black community, the white community, the Asian community. Look, man, we're all the same inside. We're all God's kids. Excuse my expression. This is bullshit. Yeah. All right? This is political bullshit. You know, they're using the communities to get votes, which is disgusting. All right. Uh, our, 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 we have the best country in the world. And unfortunately, our government is getting all screwed up because they're more interested in their own pocket than helping us. They're doing nothing about the epidemic going on, which is the drug epidemic. You hardly talk about it. Fired Up Freedom will be right back after these messages. Do you ever have moments where you feel stress, anxiety, or it's hard to sleep? Then meditation may be the perfect thing to help you. Come and join our meditation channel where there's 24 hours a day on-demand meditation music. Go to steveryan.com slash meditation. That's steveryan.com slash meditation. It's time to have freedom from the noise. So, do people die in hospital? Yes, they do. Okay. People have diabetes, especially in the black community. They have diabetes, they have high blood pressures. This is the two major things in the black community that happens. That's because of our diet. Okay. And the same thing with the, with the I work with Native Americans too. Okay, a lot of them are obese, a lot of them suffer from diabetes and high blood pressure. Right. So if you have all these different ailments and you don't take care of yourself and you're obese, guess what? You're going to possibly die and get sick. It's simple, you know? So, you know, I, I understand that, you know, everybody's afraid, you know, they, they, everything's working with fear. Right. Okay. They better be afraid of addiction because I'll tell you why. Our youth, okay, are getting destroyed. They're destroying themselves. And as you know, the youth is the foundation of any country. Right. So, you know, we got to really check out what we're doing. And, you know, you know, and I just want to make it clear. I'm not against anything. Right. I am for what works. Right. Period. Fired Up Freedom will be right back after these messages. Do you ever have moments where you feel stress, anxiety, or it's hard to sleep? Then meditation may be the perfect thing to help you. Come and join our meditation channel where there's 24 hours a day on-demand meditation music. Go to steveryan.com slash meditation. That's steveryan.com slash meditation. It's time to have freedom from the noise. Right. This country is, is, is really, in, uh, our country is really going through a real bad time. People are depressed. People are, are, are anxious. People are doing drugs and alcohol because they're locked in their homes, you know, through that whole thing. I mean, this is getting really bad. And we better wake up. 
and you know, and stop putting all these narratives out because I want votes, you know, and all this nonsense that they're doing. The Republicans and the Democrats, they need to get together. It's about us, not about them. Right. You know? And and then they, they pander to one community or the other community. And, you know, stop pandering. You know, let's do the right thing here. Fired Up Freedom will be right back after these messages. Do you ever look for certain services or products and it's just hard to find and you want to know if someone else has used that before? Well, visit my resources page, steveryan.com slash resources, steveryan.com slash resources. One of the things that's bothering me, I'll be honest with you, and I don't usually talk about it mm -hmm. because it becomes controversial and everybody wants to attack you for, look, I'm not against anything. So you want to attack us for fun? Go ahead. You know, but the bottom line is we need to get healthier in our country, a food supply, a water supply. What a lot of people don't understand is that there's such a thing as heavy metal toxicity. Okay. Mercury, lead, antinomy. Okay. All of these different things right, cause neurotransmission disruption. It mimics bipolar disorder, attention deficit disorder, and other different diseases. So you got to chelate yourself out because it stays in your body wow. and our water supply look at the, uh what is it uh, michigan look mm -hmm. what happened to them people don't realize lead in our pipes cause mental illness and it's really interesting i was in italy and they uh, in herculean is a city that got with the ashes went on top of the city through months of the volcano that did that Mm -hmm. And and they were telling us about how there was a lot of mental illness in that city, okay, and even throughout Rome. And why? Because the Romans used lead pipes to put the water and give water through, you know, the people. Mm. Lead's poison, you know, and a lot of our water systems are not good. I get a kick out of people drinking bottled water and say, well, I, I, you know, I don't drink tap water. Well, how do you know, first of all, you're not drinking tap water? That's number one. True. Okay. <laughs> number two, so the next thing I ask them, do you take a shower and do you take a bath? They say, of course I do. I said, well, then you're absorbing that water into your body anyway. Mm. See, so in my house, you know, but I can afford it. Okay, most people can't afford it. I'm saying this so people start becoming aware to start wanting to change what's going on. But I have my whole system outside of my house is the water that comes into my house gets all filtered from right. one micron to five microns to 10 microns. And then there's a whole other system. And then I, I, I use reverse osmosis for drinking water. But that I can afford now. Before I could even afford, I was homeless when I, after I got clean and sober. So I want people to understand that. Uh, I got divorced. I had no money. I had a little jar that I put quarters in. When I had quarters, I had a bicycle that somebody loaned me. And my kids used to come, and my friend lent me a room in a hotel that he owned. And my kids used to come and we used to cry together. Daddy, what are you doing here? So do I know what it's like to be poor? Absolutely. Do I know what it's like to come from an inner city? Yes, I lived in the projects. So don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what it, what inspired you to get um, clean, like when you got clean at the time? Oh, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think I had a problem. Everybody else wow. had a problem, not me. Uh, wow. My family did an, like I told you, did an intervention on me. Mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted me to go to treatment. And my mother said, well, I'll never talk to you again if you don't go. And my mother's not like that. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take a break, get everybody off my back. And... Uh, you know, I'll go in to keep them happy. Right. That's the only reason they went in. But then I had a spiritual awakening and treatment. And when I what, what happened was actually what I call a spiritual awakening. And remember, I used to, you know, I'm a recovery Catholic is what I tell people. Okay. <laughs> uh, so when I went in and it was Christmas time, I wanted to go home for Christmas mm -hmm. when I was in treatment. They said, no, you can't go. Well, I don't know about anybody else. Okay, but when I got angry, I got rageful. I didn't get angry. I got rageful. Wow. I punched the door. You know, I, I got really pissed off. And the reason I wanted to go 
home was because my friends would give me Christmas cards and they would put Coke in it. So <laughs> it wasn't about uh, seeing the family. That was what I was yeah. telling them. You yeah. know, I wanted to get high. So what happened was, I remember my therapist saying to me, do you ever pray on your knees? I said, look, man, I'm a recovering Catholic. What do you think? God doesn't hear me if I'm not on my knees. He said, how about humility? I said, yeah, okay. But what happened was I was so much pain and so much shame and so much guilt because when I started to wake up in treatment to what, what was going on in my life, I decided to try to go and put my knee down. And I say I tried because all of a sudden I couldn't put my knee down. And that may sound a little silly to people, mm. but that's the truth. And I, I had to force my knee down. I had to force my second knee down. And I said, look, whatever's out there, God, whatever you want to call yourself, Please get rid of this. You know, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And it went, let me tell you, Steve, it went away like it never was there. I don't wow. know about you or anybody else. Okay. That never happened to me. And as sick as I was, I tried to get it back. Wouldn't come back. And I, at that point in time, I realized that something or someone was looking out after me. Right. And that's what changed my life. Wow. And what's, what's really interesting about it is today, <laughs> I'm a chaplain for the North Miami Police Department. Fired Up Freedom will be right back after these messages. Do you ever have moments where you feel stress, anxiety, or it's hard to sleep? Then meditation may be the perfect thing to help you. Come and join our meditation channel where there's 24 hours a day on-demand meditation music. Go to steveryan.com slash meditation. That's steveryan.com slash meditation. It's time to have freedom from the noise. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what's going to happen. I was homeless. Now I'm a multimillionaire. I mean, life is like, you never know. That's why I wrote the book to show people that no matter where you come from, you can make it in life. Just never give up. Never, never let anybody say you can't. Okay? I don't care what color you are, what school you went to. You know, I mean, I got a, a lot of my kids that from over town of Liberty City, one of them is a major in the police department, one of them is a lawyer, another them was a doctor. The other one's dead. The other one's in jail. But, you know, the bottom line is you can't change if you want to change. No. You know? And is it harder for people of color and, and people and of, of, of uh, different? Yeah, it is. So let's not bullshit about that. It is harder. But does it mean you can't be successful? Right. So, you know, you could go and hang out on that limb if you want. Say, oh, yeah, but you don't understand. Well, that's baloney. Okay? Right. You know what I don't understand? Why are you giving up? And people say, yeah, well, you know, I... I failed at a lot of things and everything I do, it's just never good enough and it never works out. I say, listen, man, there are no failures. There are only yeah. lessons. Mm -hmm. It's what you do with those lessons that's going to make the difference. So that's my journey. You know, just because I made money doesn't mean I stop helping people and I start learning. I, one thing I know, I don't know. Yeah. And I'm interested to in keep learning. And people like yourself, Steve, that's putting information out there, you're doing God's work. Right. And that's what we're doing. We need to help our, our, our human race here. Yes. Because we're in trouble. Right. You know? And people like yourself, like myself, and other people I know, we're all out there knocking on doors. One of the days, somebody will open. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, you, you know, you first asked when you came on, um, you know, what's, you know, what's, what's the directive, you know, how like, like a lot of podcasts will ask questions and stuff. And now what you just said, what you just said, that gives motivation and inspiration. And this is why the spirit of this show is, is, is organic and just letting people say what's on their mind and their heart. Cause what you just said was so powerful. It was so powerful that anybody, regardless of their race, regardless of where they come from, they can make it. They can find a way to make things happen. Even if it's harder for them, they can find a way. That was so powerful. That well, was the harder wild. it is, the stronger you become. I believe that. 
I believe that. Absolutely. Wow. That like whoever hears that, like you're going to change even more people's lives. I know you've already done a great job. So hats off to you. But those words you just spoke, that's that's going to change so many more people's lives as well. Like, wow, I, I thank you so much for your time. Um, it's one other thing I did have to ask you. Um, I noticed you had a book out, too, about the holistic treatment for addiction and chronic release. Oh, yeah. How to beat your addictions and live a quality life. The way I wrote that, because mm-hmm. it's not John's show. Okay, because that's only my view of the world. I wanted to get other views of the world. So what I did was I interviewed about, oh, about 200 addicts and alcoholics, people with eating disorders, gambling disorders, and things like that. I wanted to know what they did to stay clean, to stay sober, to stay out of those behaviors. It's not just quitting that stuff. It's changing our behaviors. So they told me, and I put it in the book. Then I wanted to interview about 100, 150 of the ones that chronically relapsed. I wanted to know what they did and what they didn't do. And I put that into the book. Then I put my own stuff in the book. And, you know, you'll see some of the research papers in the back, too, and all this other kind of stuff. And that's how I wrote the book. Wow. Wow. It was a spirit of collaboration, the spirit of different voices, the spirit of all these stories. That's incredible. That's why I brought it up because I was like, wow. It's always a team. The reason why I became successful because I had a great team. My employees, I mean, you know, if two employees are fighting with each other, you know what I used to do? I put them in my office. It's okay. Now fight in front of me. Okay. (laughs) Or help each other in front of me. Or right. forgive each other in front of me, because I ain't having it. Wow. If only so many more employers did that today. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, we had 147 employees. I knew all of them. Yeah. And when I when I when I was running the treatment center, I still did group, I still did individuals, and I also helped my staff when they had problems. We're a family. People have problems. And most employees don't bring your problem to work. <laughs> yeah, okay. So well, give me a break already, will you? All right. right. So the bottom line is you got to help people, man. That's what we're in the business of doing, helping people. Just because yes. you work for us means you can't help we can't help you. Right. Now you can take it so far, but if they if they you know continue to repeat the same bad behaviors over and over again, then I gotta tell them you're not ready, man. So adios. Right. So yeah. you got to have boundaries. You got to have, you know, you got to do your best to help human beings. Yes. Yeah, and that's it. Because all I know is this. I learned from you. You learn from me. We learn from each other. Nobody owns this knowledge. Right. It's universal. Yeah. And being a street kid, I mean, I was in gangs when I was, I was in a black gang. I was in a Hispanic gang, an Irish gang. Uh, you read about it in the book. All right. Oh, I was in all kinds of gangs, you know. Uh, it, when we had a gang fight, a lot of times I was the war counselor. We didn't fight because I knew all the people on the opposing side. <laughs> so, you know, I came from the worst neighborhood in the South Bronx, which where Fort Apache was. If you ever looked that up, what Fort Apache was, it was the worst. It was written up in Time Magazine as the worst neighborhood in the whole United States. Wow. I had to sneak home at night so nobody knew where I was. Wow. Living. So, I mean, you know, listen, if you want to talk about, I'm not the, an uptown boy, I'm a downtown boy. Right. But I also, <laughs> I, I, I've dealt with movie stars. I've dealt, I have all kinds of people that I, I did treatment with. Yeah. Rappers, street kids, uh, all kinds of people. They're all the same. They have low self-esteem. You know, I don't care how much money you have. You know, they're all got low self-esteem. They want to be loved. They want to be wanted. They want to be respected. They want to be understood. You know, uh, people don't understand that. You see, like in the in the black community, what's so sad? I mean, I've been doing that. I, I never forget. I don't know how much time we got. Can I talk a little bit more? Or uh, sure, yeah. Uh, 1965, mm-hmm. and I'm in Florida, and I never forget when I came to Florida. We drove down and we stopped for gas and they had the colored 
and the White Fountain. Wow. And the White Fountain had a lot of people. So I went to the Colored Fountain. I said, what the hell is this bullshit? I'm from New York. We don't know about that. You know? Right. So the guy said, hey, boy, that's for the colored folk. I said, well, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's nonsense. I remember walking down the street, and if you were black and you were coming my way, you would go into the street and come around me. That's when I went to Florida, 1965. So I, I taught in Liberty City in the Carver YMCA. It was one of my black belts at a school there. So here I am, long hair, mustache, no shoes on, and a karate uniform. And I'm walking through this wire, this this, this uh, facility. And when you walk through, first you get to the gym, right? Then you get everybody stopped. What is this white guy doing in this neighborhood? Then I went through uh, the, the pool hall. They had a pool hall there. Everybody stopped. Then in the back, I went to the karate school. So one of the weightlifters come back there and said, hey, white boy, you think you can kick my ass? I said, yeah. So he says to me, I said, all right, get on the mat, right? His his arm was as big as my leg. <laughs> so he tried to punch me in the face. I sliced at them, kicked him in the solar plexus, dropped him to his knees. Just then, my black belt came in, who used to be a gang leader in the neighborhood, and a v he was a Vietnam vet, all right? And everybody in the neighborhood who knew where he was, and they were all scared of him, all right? He came in, he says, oh, I see you've been my teacher. <laughs> so I had a bunch of kids from the neighborhood that went into my class. I have over about 200 black belts. Wow. And most of them are from the African community. So, you know, uh, you know I, when I hear people talk about color, it just bothers the hell out of me. Yeah. You know? But, you know, it's been going on since the beginning of time. Hopefully uh, we wake up. Maybe the aliens that come down and we'll have a common friend or enemy <laughs> and straighten out everything. You know, I don't know. All I know yeah. is I keep doing the work and, you know, doing the best I can. The results are not up to me. That's it. Well, you're definitely doing a good job. You know, I, I, I think so personally because of Thank everything, you. you know, you can just tell you're a good person. Like just, you know, you're trying. Yes, you've had your battles, but you kept going and you and even it, with your addictions, you still was trying to help people and still was helping people. That's honorable, man. So, well, you know, you still have your <laughs> challenges. You know, my daughter is paralyzed. Yeah. She got paralyzed. Uh, she has Gillian Barre syndrome. You know, stuff still happens. My partner that was as sharp as the tech got dementia. You know, all kinds of things happen. Like, look, I always tell people if stuff is not happening in your life, guess what? You're dead. Right. Stuff always happens. It's how you deal with it, which makes the difference. So yeah, I, all the knowledge I have with alternative medicine, I'm helping my daughter. She's starting to walk. Good. I gave her stem cells. I gave her exosomes. I gave her IV injections and stuff like that uh, with nutrients, hyperbarics, oxygen under pressure. And then she's going to a sports center where they they training her to walk with a, a walker. Look, and she's as tough as nails. You know, uh, look, things go on. My wife suffers from depression. I work with her. I mean, it is what it is. But it's okay. You know? You know, or you could say, oh, man, poor me. You don't understand my life. I got this. I don't have any money. Well, get off your ass and go to work. Everybody's looking for people to work. Well, I don't like that job. It's not enough money. Well, how, well, how are you doing now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Simple stuff. Yeah. You know, we don't make money from doing these podcasts. We're giving yeah. information and helping people. Right. That's true. That's yeah. true. I know. I have my own podcast. I yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. I just enjoy, enjoy, you know, you know, even if it's one person touched or a thousand people touch, how many ever, we did our job. Yeah, what is one person's life worth? You know, with addiction, when you when you help one person and they stop using drugs, you help a whole family. True. Because they're yeah. all addicted to that person. Yeah. And it's the same That's thing true. with depression and anxiety. There's all sorts of great stuff coming out with that. 
you know, there's a, a TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, where they, they stimulate your brain. Uh, there's uh, psychedelics are coming out. I'm one of the leading experts on uh, a drug called Ibogaine. Right. I could look it up. You know, uh, it helps uh, detox people in 24 hours. Right. Which is unheard of. Yeah. Plus, you have what is known as a cathartic experience. In other words, what uh, the traumas that you went through in life, mm -hmm. you have resolution. So it's really cool stuff, man. I love what I do. And I'm sure you love what you do. You're still doing it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's, it's been great having you on. It's a ton of information. It's going to really help a lot of people. And time flies by. Can you believe it's already been like 47 minutes? I know. That's why I was telling you, I don't know how much time you have because yeah. I can talk for three days. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds to me like I'm going to have to have you back for round two, you know? <laughs> Anytime, man. Anytime you want. Then I can get into some of the weeds with you, you know? Yeah, that I think that'd be great. I definitely will be in touch about that because I, I I can see you're a wealth of information and it's going to really help a lot of people. Well, get so. the book, the kid from the South Bronx who never gave up. By the way, I don't know if you watch what, what kind of TV you if you watch TV. You ever watch Below Deck? Uh, Captain no, Sandy? I haven't seen it. Well, it, it's a famous TV show that a lot of people watch. Well, I went with her and she wants to uh, possibly make a, a Netflix out of my book. Oh wow. Uh, so I don't know. I just keep moving along. I figure this way. It's hard to hit a moving target. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, you and your family would definitely be in my prayers. And, you know, yours too. thank you. Thank you for having me. We really appreciate your time also. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm putting it out there. I believe one day your daughter is going to be able to walk fully without a walker. I really do. So it's going to happen. Yeah, so. I know. And whatever happens, happens. Yeah. You have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> well you have a wonderful wonderful day now <laughs> and you too steve thank you so much all right running from myself at times i can't describe the words i try to feel